Chicago may be called the second city, but it reigns supreme when it comes to museums. There are so many great exhibitions here, it's an embarrassment of riches. History may be representational, while time is abstract, yet both are on full display here, satisfying so many of our curiosities. So let us share with you but a sampling of the intense and pleasurable experiences to be found here in the first city of Chicago. Science and Industry is the largest science museum in the Western Hemisphere. We've been around for more than 80 years, and we have 14 acres of exhibit space here at the museum. If you have not been to the Museum of Science and Industry in the last three years, you have not seen the Museum of Science and Industry. We have completely reinvented the museum and have redone more than 75% of our exhibits on the floor. The tornado is a 40-foot tornado that you actually get to manipulate so you can adjust the force and intensity of the tornado in our Science Storms exhibit. But then, of course, you cannot leave the museum without seeing our U-505 submarine. It's a really compelling true story of the capture in 1944 of a German submarine by the U.S. Navy. one of the most spectacular spaces in Chicago's. Behind me is Sue, the world's largest, most complete T-Rex. Sue had a long journey getting here. She was discovered in South Dakota in the hills, and there was a long battle for her. Everyone wanted a piece of her. And after a long debate and court case, she ended up at Sotheby's in New York for auction. And the Field Museum was the lucky bidder and so she took her place here at the Field Museum in 2000. Field Museum is the fourth largest natural history museum in the world. Um, part of that can be based on our collections of 25 million specimens. Part of that could also be on what you can actually see when you're here. So there's over 350,000 square feet of public space, including exhibitions in spaces like Stanley Field Hall. The Field Museum specifically got its birth at the 1893 World's Fair. So the whole reason we exist and the whole reason our collections are here came out of this effort by Chicago to bring the world to this crossroads city. And all the stuff that was left over from the fair stayed here and became the basis of our foundation. Certainly the collections make every exhibition unique. Our, our Evolving Planet exhibition has one of the best collections of dinosaurs in the world. The dioramas are extraordinary because they were all made by Carl Akeley, who was really the premier taxidermist of a generation and still today. The Gem Hall is also an extraordinary treasure with a lot of things that you just don't see out in the open. The Art Institute came into being in the late 1800s building that we're in was built for the 1893 Columbian Exhibition here in Chicago. Chicago has been home to many people who felt it was their responsibility to give back to the city and to help make Chicago a world-class city. And those same people were the ones who were going out and seeing the art that was being created around the world and they were building their own collections but also working with the museum and establishing this permanent collection of the museum that rivals any great museum in the world. One interesting point that I, I think is not obvious to, to most people and something that we're very proud of at the Art Institute, some of the greatest 
pieces of art here are pieces that have been at the Art Institute for a very long time, American Gothic and Nighthawk. Both of those paintings were purchased by the Art Institute within a year of the time they were painted. So when you think about American Gothic or Nighthawks, these are not paintings that became famous in pop culture and the Art Institute went out and bought them. These are pieces that the, our predecessors recognized as being great art at the time they were created and purchased them and have enabled them to become these very popular pieces of art in the time since then. Having a first-hand experience with art it goes beyond just seeing the piece of art. It makes people think creatively. It, it enables you to, um, to really understand the sort of creative process that goes on in an artist's mind, or at least to glimpse it and try to understand it. The museums of Chicago are passports to wonders and miracles. Glimpses into other lives, religions, art, experiences, the hopes and dreams and strivings of all human beings. They are the visas that open our eyes and hearts to the world beyond our windows. They store the energy that fuels imagination, open the lids to treasure chests of knowledge. A visit to the great museums of Chicago will change you. It will inspire you to explore and achieve and to perhaps help change the world.